Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome. It's Nurse Richard the Wax Wizard. Thank you for joining me. Um, there's two ears, well, actually, there's four ears in this, but there's two procedures, um, which are good looking procedures, uh, the, the first two. But the, hence the title of the video, there's a story I want to show with you and the images of a couple of ears um, of a young child who came to see me who was spectacularly misdiagnosed. Um, and again, this ties into the do your due diligence, um, make sure who you're going to knows what they're doing um, and doesn't miss anything obvious um, or sinister. But I'll be honest, this particular service should have known better. Uh, it just goes to show the, um, the, the state that this industry is in at the moment. But I'll get on to all that later. Because it was quite shocking, but not an isolated incident, unfortunately. Um, but the first two years, what can I tell you about these? This, these were, um, it was a, a young, I say young, <laughs> compared to me, he's a little bit younger than me. Uh, a young gentleman I went to see at home. Now he couldn't come to see me because he was in a wheelchair and my clinic's upstairs doesn't, doesn't have a lift, unfortunately. We did have some rooms available downstairs, but they're a bit more expensive. So, but I like getting out and about seeing people at home, so I, I didn't mind. <clears throat> and he'd uh, been really struggling to hear in, in this ear in particular, the other one not so much, uh, but they were, they were both very, very blocked, but it was, he had a really long, um, ear canal and uh, the entrance to it was, was particularly long so I had to go fishing really deep down for this. Um, it wasn't the widest one either, certainly not deep down here because uh, it's already in the, in the bony part of the ear. So what I've done, I've started to use the, I've started with the fine end tube. Um, a couple of reasons for that, uh, it looked like a lot of this um, was, was layers of skin and those can squeak and squeal a bit. Um, so that's less likely to happen with a smaller tube, so it's about a millimetre, it's tiny this thing. You might look at this and think, ah, oh, that looks easy. Um, it's really not, this is a highly magnified um, image of the procedure that you see and it's minuscule. Um, so I used it to, uh, for that reason, to keep the noise down, um, but also you, you can see better as well. If you imagine there's a tube in there that's double the size of that one, which it pretty much is the standard size tube. It's difficult to see around it as well, especially in a, a narrowish ear canal. Um, so you've, you've got to be able to see at least around the edges of it and you help also get a bit of perspective as to where things are in the ear. Um, but it does come with a few downsides, is slightly less power. Um, well, quite, I don't know exactly how much, but considerably less power in, in the smaller tube, it's just because of the, the surface area of it is less, less the, the suction becomes weaker the, the narrower the orifice it goes through. I'm not sure on the science behind that but I can tell just from, I know just from experience it's not got as much oomph as the bigger tube. Don't ask me to explain the physics behind that. Um, so it, it did take quite a bit of persuading. I did use the full size tube on the second ear which was the same patient but the reason I did that it was um, a lot more nearer the outside of the ear. I've got an itchy one myself. I can need to have a look in my own. Um, yeah, it was it was nearer the outside, so the noise wouldn't have been as much of an issue with it. But obviously here it's it's quite close to the eardrum, so it's the noise could be more of an issue in this one. Hence why I've used one tube on one and another tube on another. Um, I was tempted to take the fine end off actually, uh, as I've brought it forward a little and finish it off with a full size tube, but I just persevered with it like you do but it, it it started to move a bit better when I started getting um, getting a grip of it from the top there so you can see the whole thing moving can't you and it is about to jump forward but it just broke off a little bit so I think as soon as we get a grip of it from the uh, the top section of this then it does start moving a lot easier um, I must say thanks to all of you this is the, I know I record all my videos in bulk, do like four or five in a row sometimes. I've only got time to do one today. Um, so this is the first time I've done a video following uh, the previous four or five that, have, that you'll have seen and the one where I included some images and a video of, of, of Mrs. Isherwood. And I wanna say thank you for all the kind comments. Um, 
You're right. She, she did read them all, actually. She didn't. I said, if you want to make, if you want to feel good about yourself, because not all women do all the time, do they? Then uh, just have a read of these here. Uh, so you made her day. Um, and in answer to a lot of the other comments, um, yes, I am punching well above my weight. I am aware of that. <laughs> my wife's a little younger than me. I say a little, it's about 10 years. I think, I think when, uh, when she first met me, she said, oh, I'm looking for a man, not a boy. Uh, but then unfortunately she met me. <laughs> We're supposed to be a bit more mature as we get older. It's not necessarily the case, unfortunately. Um, anyway, managed to clear that. There there's a few That's little marks nice. here, there and everywhere. So whether there's been some uh, poking around in that, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think so. Um, but the second one here, like I said, it's not quite as deep down. So I've got the full size tube here, which is, yes, a little bit noisier. But you'll just see just how much more power it's got because it pulls it forward really quickly. And there's no messing about with this one. Straight in, straight out. But I, st I still think it was the right thing to do to start with the fine end tube on the other one. Because it was deeper and there was like lots of flaps everywhere. Because sometimes when you get this squeaking and some pleasant noise, it can, um, it can cause some, some damage sometimes, cause some tinnitus. Uh, again, nice and clear this. Now, this one here, this was a young girl. Um, I say young, she must have been four or five year old. And what had happened, I'll, I'm gonna play these images over the next minute or so, just alternating from one ear to the other. So that first image there, um, this young girl that had pain for a, a, about a week, and I mean real severe pain uh, in this ear that you can see now. You can see why, can't you? Um, so they contacted a local doctor and the doctor um, didn't say, okay, come in and see me. They advised them to go to their local pharmacy uh, because there's an, there's an initiative um, in the UK at the moment where they're trying to, uh, minor conditions, not that this is a minor condition, um, they're trying to get the pharmacists to support them with that and giving them some training in inverted commas, which I believe is optional uh, and online. Um, so a pharmacist looked at this first year, this, but you can see it and said there's no wax, uh, sorry, it said there's a full blockage in there. It's full of wax. You need to go and see someone to sort that out. Now, I don't think you need to have even done much training to see that there's no wax in that ear. Um, there's just a lot of gunk behind it um, in the middle ear. Uh, it's quite profoundly sucked in. And the second ear, this one, just said a bit red. So let's get some drops in there. And the drops they prescribed them were potentially autotoxic drops. Now, what does that mean, autotoxic? That means it can potentially damage the hearing because um, there are some drops that are safe to use because it's, it's quite clearly perforated. That's why you can see the fluid at the bottom of it. Uh, it's pulsing away. So that fluid has quite clearly come through. Uh, I mean, it, it might have looked like this ear first. It might have looked like the, uh, the first ear where it's got this collection of fluid in there, either glue ear or middle ear infection. It's created pus, burst through. Um, and it's pulsing away, so it's quite clearly perforated, the second ear. But when you put an eardrop in there that's uh, potentially autotoxic, it can be really serious. Uh, you know, you can damage um, somebody's hearing. This was a young child, I mean, everyone's hearing is precious, but of a young child. Um, so what training this person had had, I mean, it might not be their fault, they might be pressured. To, 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 to have a look at these conditions and diagnose them. But if you're not sure, then send it back to the GP because there's been, how you on earth you can say that first one was full of wax? I've got no idea. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Even if you did an online training course, you can recognize what an eardrum looks like, even an angry one like that. Um, but it just it beggars belief. There is no other word for it. And I've shared it on my professional network on LinkedIn. Make sure Neil knows it's uh, has seen it as well. He'd be quite keen to know that there's a, another pharmacist that uh, botched things up. Um, but it's no laughing matter. It is beyond a joke. So if you do um, need your ears looking at, make sure you see somebody who's, who's trained and a specialist in these things, which might not necessarily be um, who you think, you know, just because they're a healthcare professional, they might be in one particular uh, part of healthcare that's not relevant to ears and they've just done a little bit of training, you know. By the way, this meant there's no disrespect to any uh, pharmacists watching. I, I suspect a lot of them have been put under, put under pressure to uh, have a look at and deal with these things, but they just need more training first. Anyway, 
that's enough of a rant from me. But um, so hopefully it's not done any permanent damage and she can get the correct treatment um, in the future. Now, needless to say, I've written a very strongly worded letter to her GP saying, maybe you should have looked at this first. Um, and if you're going to refer it onwards to somebody, maybe ask me to have a look. Yes, I am private. It doesn't cost the earth. I'm sure people won't mind if they knew they're going to someone who, who, uh, who can figure out what it is. Anyway, rant over. But for now, take care of yourself and I will see you soon. Ta-da.